I'm Rich, a member of the roasting team here at Rave. We're going to be roasting some coffee on a Weber grill that we're then going to be giving away. Yeah, the, the goal is to just turn some green coffee brown, and it's actually quite easy to do, but doing it really well is much more difficult and often requires more specialized equipment. But uh, there are lots of coffee producing countries like Ethiopia where they uh, do something called a coffee ceremony where they will actually uh, roast their coffee and pan over a fire before uh, brewing it immediately. So you guys know, I actually did burn down a portion of my parents' house when I was young. Oh, James Tony has our food at the Yeah. <laughs> we have a washed Ethiopian here, so we're gonna do it like they do in Ethiopia. Here we go. So all we're doing here is just evaporating water. It will sort of gradually go from green to yellow and then to brown. But there's not much uh, chemically happening at this stage. You're, you're literally just evaporating water out of the green coffee. Don't do this. Don't, don't, I'm, I'm crying. This is, this, is, this, is, this is not my idea. <laughs> One of you take over for a sec. Here, your turn. Just, let me just get a few a few breaths of just fresh normal air. When you roast coffee in a commercial production setting, usually a roasting drum has lots of little arms that will be constantly uh, shuffling the coffee around as, as the drum rotates. So the goal here is constant movement, constant agitation. Otherwise we will uh, scorch the green coffee. The main thing a coffee roaster is looking out for towards the end of a roast is something called purse crack. That is a point where there's sort of an evaporation front in the green coffee. It's moisture being driven away from the outside and then slowly more and more towards the center. And I think popular theories as to what occurs with purse crack is that it's a buildup of CO2 in the center of the coffee bean and it's, it's to the point to where the actual structure of the green bean can't contain the pressure anymore and it actually makes a pop. It's very similar to what happens with uh, uh, popcorn. So with coffee roasting, we typically look to the end of the drying phase to be around 160-ish, depending. Um, I like to mark 167 because that's the point when the coffee beans are definitely yellow, like completely yellow. Uh, this is not super even, which uh, is probably just a result of uh, the pan having hot spots and me not stirring it well enough, but we are roasting it. Ooh, so that was first crack, but oh yeah. So we're gonna wait for more of like a quick succession of pops. We want maybe like I want it to be like pop, pop, pop. And this looks pretty brown, so we're gonna probably take it off in a couple minutes. Maybe when it's a little more, I don't think it's gonna, it's not gonna get super evenly roasted, but it's looking like a nice medium-ish, some of them. With roasted coffee, you ideally want to get it to sort of under 100 C if you can within five or so minutes because the coffee is still actually roasting when it comes fresh out of the drum. Uh, the, the actual like reactions that are still occurring and slowing them down by getting it as cool as you can will ensure that you don't end up with really like over roasted unpleasant coffee. You basically, when you profile a coffee when roasting, you have something called development time, which is your time after first crack. Um, I think our development time was probably way too long on this, but you want to cool it because uh, cooling it basically means, if you don't cool it, your development time ends up being way, way too long because essentially the coffee keeps roasting as it's uh, in, the, in the cooling tray. Yeah, just some of it looks really done, and then some of it uh, is like probably criminally under roasted. So I 
probably going to be some maybe, if we don't, I think maybe when we taste it, if we're very selective about which beans we pick out to brew, otherwise it's going to be like, some of it's over-roasted, scorched, burnt, some of it's going to be under-roasted and very like, vegetal, um, sour, unbalanced. Let's go color track it, I'm curious. Uh, this is a uh, Lytel's color analyzer. It's what roasters use to measure how roasted coffee is. We'll be able to tell sort of by different readings how actually developed it is. It could be terribly underdeveloped. Maybe we should have just thrown a chicken on while we were doing that. Oh wow, that's a nice medium. <laughs> what I was aiming for. That's a nice medium light. That's very good. Very good. 65. What's the delta? Point to say. <laughs> the delta's gonna be delta no. <laughs> We want to know what the inside is. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not terrible. It's not good, but it's not like awful. What'd you get? 100. So 65 and 100. So not like horrid. Like we get better deltas with the Lorings for sure. What are we calling this one? Uh, the barbecue special. The, the BBQ special. So this is a coffee cupping. It's a very common quality control thing that coffee roasteries do. It's basically like making a bunch of tiny cafetiers in a sense. We're just putting some ground coffee in a bowl, adding some hot water, and then letting it sit for a bit, and then we taste it with a spoon. So we've got our uh, barbecued coffee, and then we've also got the same coffee, but roasted on a Loring. So uh, this is probably going to be better, but give it a go. See how it tastes. It's not horrible, actually. Um, it's definitely underdeveloped. Um, it's not smoky at all, though. I'm actually kind of surprised. There, there's. Just tastes like a slightly underdeveloped coffee. There's, um, yeah, it's uh, acidity is a little bit brighter than this one. It's a little bit thinner, um, slightly more kind of aromatic, less kind of chocolatey multi notes than this. It's got sort of uh, the qualities that I would say hinted under development would be it's got kind of like a like a low quality green tea, almost uh, cereally, a little bit. Um, kind of straw or hay maybe. Those are usually classic signs that your coffee's a bit underdeveloped and needs to be pushed a little bit further. Or in this case, uh, left on the grill for a bit more. Which one do you think is the barbecue coffee? Opposed to the other one is on the lorry. Yeah. Just these two? Yeah. Which one? It's barbecue? Mm. Yeah. Correct. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. <laughs> Same! Same! Uh, I, 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 I in, in, immensely regret doing this, um, but I was pleasantly surprised that it turned out alright. So people should just uh, pay you to roast it on the lower? Yes. And just give, 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 give us money and then we will roast the coffee for you. Not on a barbecue, but on a quarter of a million pound mooring. That will give you great results consistently. So, yeah. Bye, Rave. Oh, no. <laughs>